the Ticats Audio Network. This is ongoing coverage of the 2023 Grey Cup Festival leading up to the 110th Grey Cup in Hamilton. Welcome to ongoing coverage of the 2023 Grey Cup Festival on the Ticats Audio Network. I'm Braden Neville. On today's show, the Grey Cup arrives at Fan Central on James Street, and CFL Commissioner Randy Ambrosi speaks to the fans. The YWCA Rise and Shine Young Trailblazers breakfast took place with some very special guest speakers. 1,400 students showed off their speed in the community race to the Cup, presented by First Ontario. Fan Central really kicks off in Hamilton, and we talked to Sergeant Scott. Scott Sterling about the Canadian Armed Forces fan zone and U10 Junior Ticats coach Gregory Time at the Hamilton Flag Football Classic. What a day it's been already with several events still scheduled to kick off tonight and it's been a great start to the festivities in Hamilton. I was all over town. There was so much going on and I started off the morning at the YWCA Rise and Shine Young Trailblazers event at the beautiful Leuna Station. Such an awesome place to put on an event like this and the turnout was incredible. There were tons of guest speakers including WNBA star Kia Nurse who was one of the panelists for the event. It was a really unique experience for the youth and supporters to hear firsthand from female trailblazers in the sports industry and the setup was incredible they had just about every breakfast food you could think of there was awesome speakers what better way to start off the day and i spoke to the events organizer well our rise and shine breakfast is an event that we bring youth together across the community to celebrate young women girls and a gender diverse people and to provide some kind of inspirational messaging and also to help amplify their voices and remind them of the power of of who they are as young people and the potential they have and what's the need for this and something like this here in the community well, I think we, we don't spend enough time talking about inclusion, and we don't spend enough time, to, particularly with today's topic, inclusion in sports. And so we really want to profile that sports should be a place where everybody has the opportunity to participate, and that sex, race, religion, disability, sexual orientation, gender identity should not be barriers to participation, but should be a, an opportunity to create inclusion. And who's going to be on the panel today? There's going to be a great panel of, of women from across all of sport. Yeah, so we have a diverse panel representing different spaces and, and inclusion issues in sports. And we're so excited to have Kia Nurse speaking from the WNBA. Like a professional, yeah. uh, high-profile athlete who's from Hamilton, a woman. It's just so exciting for us to be able to you know, have her uh, profiled, put on a platform, and for to have young people see her and then to know that they could if they want to they can have that kind of success too that there's no limitations for them and it's such a great role model and someone to have how what was it like to get her on board for this and get her involved in the process well it was really exciting it was a you know it was an idea Mm -hmm. that generated from uh, a text a text my brother sent me who's into sports and who's happened to see uh, Kia speak and you know goes to the Raptors games and sees her there and and he said you've got to get canners to you got yeah. to get canners on stage and I thought this is such a great idea for this particular event so that was that was the impetus for it and you have such a great venue here Leona station uh, what can you say about the venue and, and and the setup here for this event well Leona station is a historic mm-hmm. uh, building it's such a beautiful important space in our city yeah. and it's a place where people arrived into the community a lot of immigrants came and arrived through this train station and so it's got that historic reference it's also a place where we have lots of important powerful people come and speak events are held the mayor's breakfast is held here other kinds of events so to bring young people into the space to see the history of Hamilton and then also to bring them into a place where power Yes. It happens, yes. right? Powerful people are powerful presence and to give them that sense of their own power. Mm-hmm. And I think we should do that more in our community. We should listen and focus a lot more energy on young people and their voices. 
It was a busy morning in Hamilton and across town at Gage Park. 1,400 students were in attendance throughout the day to participate in the community race to the cup presented by First Ontario. And it was an awesome opportunity for local students to participate in a one-kilometer race in Hamilton. It ended up at Tim Hortons Field with the famous Grey Cup waiting for them at the finish line. It's been making its rounds around Hamilton this week. The Ticats Audio Network's very own Andy Fantuz was there. They were running with the students along with several other alumni and who was firing up those students as the host of the event forge fc's digital and in-game host mackenzie barwell and if anyone's going to pump you up it's mackenzie and i caught up with her today oh my gosh the energy is high i'm having a fantastic time um, it was hard to keep the kids back they wanted to start the second they got here but yeah. just an unreal atmosphere shannon and i were just saying that it's there's so much value in experiences like this especially for students at that age and to see the alumni too they're just so excited and we're only first of four waves so far so how, how is it controlling this many kids it's a lot you're doing a great job <laughs> thank I mean. you thank you it's a lot i think uh they don't really want to stretch when i tell them to stretch <laughs> but they're actually they're pretty good um yeah there's, there's just so much excitement but i think that's a good thing so, so what's so what is it four waves today of yeah kids? yeah so we have one we had one five minutes ago we have one in 10 minutes i think they're every 20 30 but you know what they're probably gonna run a kilometer in four minutes yes. or less than that so we'll probably crank them out sooner than later but. and what do you think about the venue here gauge park the weather's perfect oh, did, did, could the day have gotten any better no literally phenomenal i, I arrived and i was like why have i never been here before mm -hmm. i'm genuinely gonna come back come for a walk such a beautiful park i didn't even know it existed and we are blessed with a sunny warm day so i don't really know what else i could ask for that was mackenzie barwell and those kids were matching her energy which is not easy to do but there was a lot of excitement going around that gauge park today a lot of work went into organizing this event there's so many kids and schools that were a part of it and i caught up with the events organizer anna lewis uh, we couldn't be happier. The weather's perfect. The kids are awesome. Um, you can really feel their energy at the start line. They're so enthusiastic and just seeing their beaming faces yeah. is, is reward enough to, to have this uh, event for them. How many kids are supposed to be running in today's race? Uh, we're expecting about 1,400. Wow. Okay. Mm -hmm. that's, a, that's a good number. So it is. what kind of organiz organizing and planning goes into a big event like this, especially here at the beautiful Gage Park in Hamilton? Well, we're really excited to um, have the kids uh, enjoy this uh, 1K route from Gage Park to Tim Hortons Field. And just running up to, you know, where the Great Cup is going to be is, is really exciting. Mm -hmm. The Great Cup will be there at the finish. That's so true. that's why it's named Community Race to the Cup. Uh, so I think for, for the kids, it's a, a great opportunity to um, get the feel of this festival and, and what it means to our city. What have been the reactions so far from the kids? Uh, they seem pretty excited from what I've seen. They are. They're so excited that... Uh, you know, it, it actually is contagious. Yeah. You know, you're, you're standing at the start line and you're like, I want to, I want to join in. I want to be part of this. And I think that's the whole point of it is to, to come out, be active, uh, do something with your community um, and support something that's so uh, well known in Hamilton. And where are the students coming from today? They're all over. So okay. we have uh, the, the public board, we have the Catholic board uh, from the mountain, from Flamborough, uh, from downtown. Uh, so it's uh, everywhere. I also noticed not only do we have Neil Lumsden here, we have Andy Fantuz, a bunch of alumni. What's that like for them to, to have these ex-Ty Cats and Ty Cats alum come out and join them for the race? Well, I think it really adds to the energy and the excitement. Um, certainly, I think the kids get a great kick out of seeing these professional football players uh, do something with them. Yeah. Uh, so that's always exciting to be with these athletes. And I think the athletes, um, as, as we said, the energy that the kids bring is, is so contagious that uh, they get a, a real kick out of it and see some um, great reward from being here. Well, based off that start, I think we might have a few future Thai cats possibly in the race today. So thank you for joining me. And, and it's going to be a great event and a beautiful day for us. That was Anna Lewis back to the other side of Hamilton on James Street. It was heating up with tons of immersive games, vendors, bands, and so much more, including the Canadian Armed Forces Fan Zone. And it was filled with fun for the whole family, free of charge and interactive area. One of Hamilton's signature venues, they had the football-themed activities, obstacle courses, and an exhibit from the Canadian Football Hall of Fame. And several men and women in the Canadian Armed Forces were there to help the fun, including Sergeant Scott Fleming, who caught up with me at the event. 
Oh, it's fantastic. It looks beautiful inside. They've got a lot of uh, great memorabilia from the Canadian Football Hall of Fame. Uh, they got a lot of different challenges you can try out here at the Armories. It's a great open area for people of all ages to come check out, try out some fun games and whatnot. Uh, we have a few military obstacles set up, some footballs to throw, a recruiting booth. We got the TSN set up here. So there's something here for everyone to come check out through Thursday, Friday, Saturday. We'll be here all weekend, 11 to 8. And I invite everyone to come out and just check out the building you might not have ever seen the inside of. And what is this building typically used for uh, when it's not uh, transformed into a football stadium and a TSN set? So typically we use this building for military training. We have five different uh units that train out of this facility here. We have two infantry units, an artillery unit, a signals regiment, um, and then a health services one as well. And uh, we use this building on a weekly basis for training, whether it's for exercises or evening training, and just preparing and learning to do more skills within our job sets. Do you think you could see any uh, future soldiers here so far today and then playing the games and then some of these obstacle courses you guys have had set up? 100%. We got a lot of young athletes here that are definitely super keen and fit, and uh, that's what we're looking for in the military. So uh, we're, we're definitely going to be wanting to talk to them a little bit, little bit later, but I definitely see some future uh, soldiers in this building today. That was Sergeant Scott Fleming. There was also a very competitive flag football tournament taking place in the armory with a specially constructed 35-yard turf football field complete with stands, a scoreboard, and it's been hosting the Hamilton Flag Football Classic, which is a multi-day tournament hosted by Football Ontario. And I caught up with the Niagara coach, Gregory Time, to get his take on the tournament and the unique venue. This is a lot more than I expected, and it looks great. Uh, seeing all the, all the things set up and the different vendors and everything, it looks really great. The kids are excited. The kids wanted to be here, and they're just really excited to play the game of football. What age group is, are you coaching? This is 10 and under. Okay, okay. So it was a tight game out there. Uh, what's, was it was a little different with a little shorter field, but, a, but a, it seemed like it was still a fast-paced game. It, it was very fast, probably a little faster than I expected. <laughs> so get something to get used to, but something they can try to help the kids out for the next game because it was a lot faster than I expected as well. What were the kids' reactions when they saw the field today? They were excited. They, yeah. they, they love playing football. They're all excited to play, and they just saw the field and say, like, wow, this is cool. <laughs> and so you have how many games are you guys playing today? Four today. Four games. So how are the kids staying hydrated? What are you guys doing in between games? Are you checking out some of the festivities around the area? We will. Uh, when, we have a, when we have a larger break, we'll probably all break for lunch. But right now we have coolers. we got lots of water bottles. So we're going to stay hydrated and have lots of good, healthy snacks in between games. And how have you been feeling about the Great Cup festivities this week and all the stuff going around the city? Wow, it's, it's, it looks exciting. It looks yeah. great. Wish Hamilton was in it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, it looks like it's going to be fun and hopefully a good game. That was Coach Gregory Time, and good luck to him and his team and the rest of the young athletes this week. I saw some talent out there. I saw a couple kids with absolute bullets for arms, and it was tons of fun to watch those kids battle it out on the turf. Just outside the armory, a crowd gathered for an exciting moment when the Grey Cup made its way to Fan Central on James Street for the Purolator Grey Cup trophy delivery, and it was absolutely glistening in the sun. It looked better than ever on this beautiful sunny day on this Thursday afternoon, and CFL Commissioner Randy Ambrosi spoke about the Grey Cup Festival. Well, I will also try to speak loudly so that you can all hear. Let me start by saying it is great to be here in Hamilton. And oh my gosh, look at this weather. We are being treated to a fantastic November and you're about to be treated to a remarkable Grey Cup week and a Grey Cup Festival. And I hope each and every one of you and your families and friends, not just locally, but from around Canada and around the world, you know, have an opportunity to enjoy every bit of what the Thai Cats uh, have in mind for all of you and what this beautiful city is about to deliver. I'd also, uh, you know, echo Paul's, uh, or echo the comments about the relationship with Purolator. And I was thinking earlier, uh, you know, when we need packages, Purolator delivers. But when communities need help, Purolator delivers. And this program has now been in place for 20 years, 20 years and 20 million pounds of food has been raised and distributed to Canadian families in need. And for that, we are truly grateful for this amazing partnership. It is one of the finest partnerships in the world of sport and business and something we're especially proud of at the Canadian Football League. A giant shout out to Bob Young and Scott Mitchell and Matt Afnek and Jim Lawson to, to the entire Ticats organ, you know, organization to their Great Cup Committee for, for putting all of this together. As we know, we're gonna see a lot of, gonna listen to a lot of music, we're gonna see a lot of sights, we're gonna have a lot of fun, lots of activations to get uh, our youth together. We are having 
the single greatest season off the field in CFL history with the growth in our TV ratings, the growth in our fandom. And, and I want to say uh, that we have our players and our coaches and our non-football operations staff to thank for putting the best, the funnest, fastest, most entertaining brand of football in the world is played right here in Canada. And it's something that I know you join me in being proud of. So with that, thank you. I just want to say to all of you, I hope you have a lot of fun. As we see it every Grey Cup since 1948, when a bunch of crazy Calgarians got on a train with a horse and went to Toronto and rode the horse through the Royal York Hotel, the, the era of the Great Cup Festival was born. Now, I'm not encouraging any of you to ride a horse through a hotel this week, but I am certainly encouraging all of you to have a lot of fun. Welcome your neighbors, welcome your friends, welcome, the, uh, welcome people from across the country that may have been here for 50 years running or somebody that may be at Great Cup for the very first time, share with them the true CFL Great Cup spirit and let them know that this is, the, this is where you need to be in Canada for the next few days. Thanks very much, everyone. That was Commissioner Randy Ambrosi. The events are just kicking off and we will have all your coverage of everything going on tomorrow. And I'll also be recapping tonight's awards and the one and only Shaggy's performing. I can't wait. It's going to be a time and a half. Make sure to check out all the festivities happening around the city because there's so much going on. You don't want to miss out on it. Thank you for listening. We'll have more coverage tomorrow on the Ticats Audio Network. From the Thai Cats Audio Network, this is ongoing coverage of the 2023 Grey Cup Festival leading up to the 110th Grey Cup in Hamilton.